Today we're talking about filling gaps and cracks in wood without using wood filler. I wanted to revisit this advanced technique for any questions people might have or anybody new to the channel. The first thing you're going to do is set your table saw between 5 and 7 degrees and take a first arbitrary rip just to set an edge at 5 to 7 degrees. Once you complete this rip, you're going to flip the board while maintaining your 90 degree edge on the fence. So as now you're going to invert your five degree cut. What you want to do is essentially test bump your cut so the blade is just coming through, leaving you with anywhere from an eighth to a 32nd of tip of that wedge on the wood. I'll show you here in a second what the first cut should look like. Just so you have a little sliver of wood and at the very end you've made a perfect wedge shape here. Now, as you go through, you can cut your wedges larger or bigger depending on the gap or crack that you're attempting to fill. And you can cut as many as you need. When I'm doing installs and packouts, I cut plenty of these things. This is great for all kinds of trim, nosing, tables, millwork, anything you need, this method works. So much better than wood filler because it is utilizing the same species. Pro tip, set your saw back to zero degrees um, so you don't destroy a project. Any wood glue will work. Thick and quick is thick and quick. Um, type on two and three work as well. CA glue, super glue, pretty much any adhesive that works with wood except for foam adhesive, I would not use like a polyurethane Gorilla Glue. Simply put glue in the crack and gently tap until the wedge stops moving down. Now you might be thinking this is going to expand the gap. It's not going to. Um, if you really force it in or it's steel, it will, but these are gentle taps until it reaches its maximum depth. And then you can do one of two things. You can quickly snap it off and have great success. Or you can attempt to use a chisel. And during this process, before I start cutting them all flush, I like to wedge most of my work so I can kind of follow the process along. I like to let the glue dry for a minimum of 20 minutes before trying to break these things flush or cut them. Uh, what ends up happening is you get some nasty tear out. Now using a chisel is a great method. You can use a power sander. You could use a block plane. Uh, you could use a block sander. It's, uh, it's really up to you. Just use the chisel the right direction, not like this. You properly flip it upside down. Unfortunately, it's a very dull edge, but it's great for this kind of routine maintenance uh, woodworking. Then you're just gonna sand it flush, and what you're gonna realize is you have a very great connection of wood to wood surface where the filler cannot expand and contract and crack. Uh, you actually now have a chemical bond. Now snapping and breaking these off is something I'm used to doing in the field very quickly, but I want to express the risk in this method, which I really don't recommend, is that it can force a lot of tear out um, if you move too quickly, if you don't let the glue set, or you just try and hammer it off before the glue is set. It ends up looking like this. The grain shears off perpendicular to itself and it just doesn't look good. That is a proper joint, sanded and stained, and you really got something to work with. Now, I've done a video on this method before that had a lot of traction and a lot of questions and a lot of um, thank yous from people for it working. This is an advanced technique that any skill level woodworker can truly learn to master in a very minimal period of time. Now. Some of you guys might be critical of this and saying, hey, that crack was all the way through the table that needs to be keyed. You are not wrong. Um, that was a dramatic viewing of an end check just to showcase this. If this was for a client, I would absolutely key uh, that crack or that split so it cannot advance further in the project. However, this wedge method is fantastic for surface level imperfections and highly recommend you guys trying to use this in the field just to see if you can get a little bit more away from wood filler. Uh, the death of wood filler, as I call it, is something that I celebrate on a job when I really don't have to use it. I think it's high risk. Um, it's got its applications, and there are times when I love it, and I will do tutorials on my favorite ones. But I think when you're working with veneers, or especially hardwood glue-ups, wood filler is ultimately going to fail you in some capacity, especially if you utilize it as a, uh, a crutch. So, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to you. Remember, five to seven degree cuts, you're running it through the table saw and then flipping it back, maintaining the same edge on the fence. So you then create a wedge cut. That cut then becomes custom, the thickness desired uh, of your choice. 
hopefully using the same species as the table or the veneer. Um, so as it matches and ages, expands and contracts at the same level. Use a wood glue or a wood adhesive. Um, I like tight bond products. One, two, three, and quick and thick are all great for this application. Let the joint dry for 20 minutes. Chisel, block, plan, or sand it flush. Break it if you must, but be prepared to deal with some tear out and negative space. Again, if you guys have questions, let me know in the comments. If you like what you're seeing, please do me a favor and uh, consider giving us a thumbs up. It really helps us out. We are growing this channel to the best of our ability. Uh, if you really like it, subscribe. And uh, I hope that you guys are having a great time learning something here. I hope you guys are enjoying the trades and learning to build more and get out there and get after it. And uh, do something good for your neighborhood or your country uh, this weekend. Get out there and have fun. See you guys.